song talked about how our holiness can be shown to God. Our next song this morning shows how all of creation expresses the holiness that God provides. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church in Bartow. And uh, as we have said, we are so grateful that also you are welcoming us into your homes. Thank you for opening your doors to us. This week is going to be, an, unfortunately, the new normal. So we have uh, prayer tomorrow, Monday at 10 a.m. via Zoom. Again, if you want to be part of this prayer, just email Cynthia or call her and uh, she will tell you how to, how to get onto Zoom for, for our prayers. Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. Bible study and worship next Sunday at 1027. Now, next Sunday is Memorial Day and we have been enjoying all the pictures and the videos that you have been sending. If anybody wants to send a salute to the troops, if you want to honor anybody, uh, send the pictures, send a video, and we will put it as part of the service. Welcome again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This morning's call to worship comes from Psalm 29, 1 through 4. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. 
the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. Today we're going to be singing a wonderful hymn called, Oh, How I Love Jesus. It's page 170 in your hymnal, and we'll sing all three stanzas. Dear God, we come before you in prayer. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Oh, how I love, how we love Jesus. Because first, you loved us. And we say, God, with the prophet Isaiah, and with King David, and with the multitude in Revelation, and with our praise band, we say, holy, 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 God of heavens and earth, you're worthy, God, of our worship. We bow our heads. We bow our hearts, God. You are worthy to receive our prayer. Thank you, God, for all you do for your people. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. It's good to worship you, God. It's good to feel your presence. We are made anew when we are worshiping you, and we thank you, God, because, because your Holy Spirit renews us. We are recreated as we come before the throne in worship and in prayer. Thank you, God. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let your name be glorified. We pray, Father, for those who are ill at this time in our congregation and uh, in uh, other churches. We pray for our friends and with our uh, family members. We pray, for with, we pray with and for our leaders in our nation. And uh, we pray with and we pray for our leaders in our United Methodist Church. We pray, God, in every, for every single elder who is now by themselves in, the, in a hospital or in a nursing home or at home, God. We pray, God, for those who are battling cancer. We pray for those who are battling aches, body aches in their bones or in their muscles. We pray, God, for um, our athletes that are 
uh, eager to go back to the fields and uh, and do what they do, <laughs> play. <laughs> and we, we pray also, God, for our graduates. Today would have been our graduation service, so we don't forget our 16 uh, seniors from high school who we would be honoring them today, God. We honor them anyways, and we thank you for them. We thank you for their birthdays. We thank you for Mackenzie's birthday, which was uh, which was this week. We thank you for uh, all our youth that asked for you. We thank you for Sean, our youth director. We thank you for Caitlin Gatling and uh, and for Ina and for uh, uh, Miss Susan um, Bergdahl, who works with the children. Uh, we thank you, God, for uh, people who are giving their lives to you, their sacrifice to you on a single day basis, God. We give you the honor and the worship, God. We thank you for cleansing us of our sins. We belong to you, God. You are our God. We confess you as our Lord and Savior. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everything. 
Our scripture this morning very much mirrors the song and the text that we just sang. Hear these words from the book of Revelation. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands singing with a full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might with honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing, to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Well, uh, that was a beautiful song. Thank you, praise band. Indeed, he is worthy. We are so blessed that we can worship God with music that fills the heart. Uh, also, thank you, Keith Peterson, for reading the scriptures. You all have done so much these days uh, that we have been worshiping online. Everybody has, has been great coming to church and working hard. I want to thank all of you that are making these services possible. The Praise Band, Brandon Picard, Amy Fitzgerald, Olivia Chancy, Tom Tuttle, Heath Peterson, Sean Fitzgerald behind the soundboard, Dan Rodo was here helping us also in the soundboard, but thank God a prayer was answered and he got a job. So. Uh, we don't have him now, but uh, we're, we're glad that he's uh, working. God has been good answering our prayers. Uh, in the organ, Bill is here so many times during the week practicing, and Sylvia has been a hit online. She has become very popular. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Ina Ogden and uh, Margie and John Anderson, Deborah Brister, reading uh, the... Uh, leading the hymns and then reading the scriptures uh, many have been helped uh, many have helped during the liturgy doing the prayers the scriptures etc and now Bonnie Allen we cannot forget about Bonnie Allen uh, she has been putting together music and I want to tell you today um, if my sermon is it's my if my sermon is long-winded <laughs> Take a break, but come back quickly, because right after the sermon, we have a choir ensemble that Bonnie put together, and I, I have to tell you that it is outstanding special music, and we're going to uh, listen to it right after the sermon. So thank you, everybody, for working hard and, and making our worship services possible. I used the word liturgy. Um, when I was talking about doing the worship services, we have our worship leaders. They're also called liturgists. That is a, a very important word. I like to use it. It's from the Greek, uh, but it expresses what worship is. There are two roots in the word uh, liturgy. One is laos, which means people, and the other one is ergon, which means work. Liturgy or worship is the work of the people serving God, is the, the service of God. And that is what we do when we come together. We are serving God just as this multitude, this immense group of angels and singers are in the throne of God before the Lord, worshiping Him continuously. We are part of that crowd. And I wanted to read the names of those who are worshiping here because obviously, in the book of Revelation, we cannot listen to all the names. It's impossible. They are, I don't know, uh, trillions upon trillions. But um, each individual name is important. We are recognized before God. Our worship matters when it comes from the heart. And it, it comes from the heart. And uh, we, we know that God is pleased with our, our worship. So thank you to everybody who is making it possible. Let us bow our heads and pray. God, all of this is possible because you give us the, uh, you're giving us the energy 
the Spirit, we are connected with you because you send us, your, you sent the Holy Spirit to your people, God. Thank you. We pray that this message will be able to communicate your message to anybody listening. In your name we pray. Amen. The book of Revelation can be called uh, a book of worship because it has some, we, we would call it, we can call it a model for what worship should be like, especially chapters 4 and 5. Today we're focusing on uh, chapter 5, but this is a unit, a literary unit with chapter 4. You can read them together. When uh, the author of the book of Revelation, John, when he is taken in a vision to the throne of God, while he sees there is worship of God that happens continuously. And uh, everything that happens there in those chapters is like a model that can help us to learn how do we worship how how to worship god and in fact everything we do we do in the uh, in the church is is based on symbols and is based on uh, guidelines so to speak um, uh, that we have in the bible not only in revelation but in many other books in, of the bible so what is this don't be afraid of the book of revelation is uh, actually a, a book of encouragement and hope and patience for the church and it is a book of worship so in chapter 5 we have many symbols that uh, that we have to understand what they are so that we can uh, implement them in their church uh, we have four living beings those are angels god's angels they they symbolize the archangels but the multitude of the angels that are later on present in the book of revelation then we have 24 elders again the numbers are symbolic 24 because they summarize 12 tribes of israel and then the 12 apostles in the new testament the entirety of the of god's people before the coming of jesus and after the coming of jesus we are symbolized in those 24 elders that are there day and night before god worshiping the lord and then uh, there are lamps just as we have lamps in the in the sanctuary the light of God is the first thing that God created was light and then light and the purity of light is a symbol of God showing us the difference between right and wrong and then um, the lamps are all also they symbolize also the church the seven lamps in front of the throne of God that is the the seven churches of Asia Minor, who, which are actually symbolizing the entirety of the church throughout history. We as a church, we are in the presence of God. Our worship is special. And uh, it is before the throne of God every single day through eternity. Um, so we have chalices in, in this scripture. We have, it says that before the throne of God, there is a, a golden cup full of incense another symbol again incense we read there that it is the prayers of the saints so if you have been praying and you might think that your prayer has not been answered uh, let me tell you that god is treasuring those prayers in golden cups and chalices that are special because yes god is listening to us and he is keeping track of everything our worship through prayer our our requests our supplications they are precious because they are like incense they are like fragrance that is going up in front of of god then we have the throne of god and in the throne somebody holding a scroll so that's why we have the bible in our church and in every church we have the bible as a symbol of the word of God but that is scroll this scroll is special because it's sealed with seven seals and nobody can open it nobody has been found worthy of opening the scroll throughout the history of humanity there has not been anybody pure and holy before God until the arrival of Jesus the Lamb and the message the title of this message is he is worthy because john was crying nobody was 
worthy of opening that scroll until the Lamb came, the Lamb that was slain. It is a scroll that is written inside and outside because all the plans of God are very detailed for our lives, all the blessings that God intends to bestow upon us and upon creation. That scroll is the will of God for, for creation and nobody is able to execute it except when the Lamb comes and He is worthy. He is given the scroll and He can open the, the seals one by one and as the seals of this scroll are open, the will of God is being carried out. So we have a lamb, and why is he called a lamb? Because he carried out the ultimate sacrifice, went to the cross, did not open his mouth to complain. He voluntarily, out of love for you and for me, Jesus gave his life so that we can be redeemed. So there is proclamation in chapter 5, just as we have a sermon, just as we have proclamation uh, in, the, in, in church. There is a proclamation, and they are declaring the works of God. Why is he worthy of receiving worship? It says, chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, because you were slain, and with your blood... You purchased for God persons, now listen to this, from every tribe and language and people and nation. Nobody escapes. Sometimes we missionaries, we wonder about people from remote tribes. Where it says here, it says here that people from every tribe and even, even every language, they are redeemed. They are present there in the throne of God because they have, they have been washed by the blood of Jesus. And uh, it says, you have made them, all of us, those multitudes, you have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God. The diaconia, diaconia, or the service of God. That's what we exist for. And then it says, verse 10 at the end, take notice of this. They will reign on the earth. So you and I, my brothers and sisters, we as the church of God, we have been made a kingdom of priests and kings and queens. And we, it says here, we will reign upon the earth. When Jesus comes to establish his kingdom fully, we're going to be there with him. And therefore we worship God, we, we serve him, and we are full of gratitude because we have been redeemed from our sins. We have redeemed from the things we have done, but also we have been redeemed from the punishment uh, that unjustifiably has been inflicted upon us. All the suffering that we have, gained, we have gone through without deserving anything. Um, there are so many people that are victimized and we cannot say that they did anything to deserve the suffering that they have been going through. Persecution, discrimination, slavery. So many things that we have uh, with our sins. We have imposed burdens on people who are innocent. Thieves. People have been deprived not only materially of of what they own, but also of their dignity. They have been deprived of their dignity. But guess what? The Lamb of God had you and I, they had all of us in our mind when He was on the cross. And He is giving back to us our dignity because we are created sons and daughters of God. He had you and me in, in, in His mind when He was dying on the cross as the prelude that Sylvia played at the beginning of the service. He has the entire world. He has the whole world in his hands. And he is giving us eternal life. And he is giving us the kingdom. And we will reign upon, upon the earth. So my brothers and sisters, we have conquered. And we are conquering. By being faithful to God. But maintaining our testimony. By witnessing of the things that God does. 
<clears throat> but reta by retaining our integrity in times of difficulties, we have conquered by the blood of Jesus. And uh, we have been bestowed a crown upon us that one day we will receive from the Lord. So I wanted to tell you that you have been counted individually. You are distinguished. God has you in mind. In the book of Matthew, we read that even the hairs, the, the, the number of hairs in our head, they are counted before God. God knows us and we are special before God. And we are representing, we are represented there in that multitude because we are now worshiping God at times of difficulties. Not even the coronavirus has kept us from worshiping God, even though the doors of the church are closed for now. Soon we will be opening them. We will tell you how, and we will do that gradually, uh, little by little, so that nobody acquires coronavirus in our sanctuaries we will do that little by little but not even coronavirus has kept us from worshiping god we are faithful your offerings your tithes we have not had a congregation here in um, over two months and however the offerings keep coming into the church and we want to thank you for that we have been faithful we are passing the test and god is God has received all of that like a, like a fragrance, like an incense that is going up before God. Our faithfulness and our prayers and our worship, our, our tithes, they are going up before the, before the Lord as a fragrance that is a worship that He is worthy of. So my brothers and sisters, nobody was able to open that scroll sealed inside and outside until the lamb came he was found worthy and he took the scroll he opened it and now he rules god has been enthroned jesus has been enthroned as the lord over lords the king over kings over the entire creation our lord reigns and he is worthy for us to continue what we have been doing forever and ever, my brothers and sisters. Do not ever give up what we do. Hold on to the promises of God. In chapter 3 of Revelation, it says that those who conquer, they have been made pillars in the temple of God. We already are pillars. And we thank you for your service. And um, above everything, we thank God. Because he is worthy to receive our worship. Amen. This song was part of our cantata that we would have done on Palm Sunday. But as I thought about what songs would be appropriate, this one came to mind. Because our world is in such turmoil right now. And I think the text for this is just perfect. So here we go. Is he worthy? Is it 
good that we remind ourselves of this. It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah conquered the grave. He is David's root and the lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? They truly love us. He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus our Messiah hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again? for that wonderful inspiring message our last hymn today is going to be on page 714 i know whom i have believed it and when you get to the chorus the words are wonderful i know whom i have believed it and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which i've committed unto him against that day we'll sing the first second and last sing it out
I know, we know whom we have believed. We believe in the Lamb who is worthy. He is worthy because he gave his life in sacrifice for all of us, for me and for you, for all the people of God. Today we are noticed by God. We are within a multitude of people who are serving God. Therefore, I can tell you in the, in the name of God, First United Methodist Church in Bartow, you are blessed. People of God, you who are faithful, you are blessed. The blessings from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is with all the people of God now and into eternity. And the people of God say, Amen.